All right. Uh, I'm not just here because I'm pretty. I impart wisdom, and you have a choice whether you want to follow my suggestions or not. All right, here's, here's my latest one. Don't ever lend anybody any money. A friend of mine asked if they could borrow a uh, 100 bucks, and um, it put me into a tailspin. I, I, I felt like saying, don't do that. Don't, don't, ever, don't ask me for money. Don't ask anybody for money. I know you need it, and that's the problem, because you have to ask for money. But when you do, you're, you've decided, I'm going to let money ruin my relationship with whomever, whomever I'm asking it from, because that's what you're doing. If you ever lend money to anybody, a friend, a family member, someone you don't even like, Never expect to be paid back. And they will always say, I'm getting my check next Thursday. It's always next Thursday. And, uh, and I'll pay you back, I swear. I'm getting my refund check from the, uh, from the welfare department. I'm, I'm, getting, uh, I'm getting, a, uh, getting a check. I did a job for this guy, and I'm getting the check uh, next, next Thursday. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Don't ever expect to see that money ever again. I'm just telling you. And when they don't pay you back, it's going to ruin that relationship. If they did pay you back, it's going to still ruin the relationship because they're never going to pay you back on time. Nobody ever does. It's a rule. When you borrow money from somebody, don't pay them back. That's the rule. That's why they have courts, and that's why we watch Judge Judy and things like that. Don't ever expect to be paid back if you lend anybody any money. That's all you have to do. All right, now, I've got more of a show to do. I mean, that would be enough. Oh, boy, if I just said that and said goodbye, that would be enough. But no, I'm committed, or should be. What's the difference? On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Do Hold it. on tight. Do Things it. can get a bit weird. Don't do it. If you like that sort of thing. Don't ever lend anybody any money. Whatever. You can give them money, but don't lend it. Say good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Thank you. back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever your liquid libation may be in the morning, and join us as we take a look at the world around us. As much as it's a pleasure to be with you, the pleasure is actually all yours. And now, here's your host, Ron Van Dam. You know, uh, this is my first rodeo. I went to a rodeo last week. Um, it was disgusting. I had a hot dog and that was it. Now, this isn't my first rodeo. I've been doing some version of this show on the radio since 1989. That's older than most of you. Some of you weren't even born yet, you feckless little idiots. <sighs> Ron, what are you doing? You're alienating your audience. I know, that's what I do. 1989, what the hell is that about, huh? So I've been doing this a while. So you need to cut me so much slack it's not funny. <laughs> nearly 30 years of this thing. <gasps> Ron, wow, that's amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing. And the amazing thing is that during those 30 years, I don't think I ate any liver. I went to a, uh, a delicatessen with a friend last Friday. My friend is uh, Jewish. That has nothing to do with why we went to a del. Well, actually, it does. He just happened to love this Jewish delicatessen. He thought this was like the. Uh, it was it was the Wailing Wall. 
uh, the wailing wall of of uh, of processed meats. I, I, I he just thought this place was incredible, and <laughs> so I went there with him, and he ordered. Get this, get this. Are you sitting down? He ordered a chopped liver sandwich. Some of you don't know what chopped liver is. If you ate bad food for a week and then went to the bathroom and then looked in the toilet, you might see what looks like chopped liver. If you go to a supermarket, one of the high-end ones, you will see in their deli case a tray of chopped liver. Look at it. You will wonder if your dog somehow got into the deli case and took a dump. It is the most disgusting looking food that is possibly, possibly imaginable. It looks like a giant pile of loose stools. Now, excuse me for going there, quote unquote, but it does. It doesn't smell like it, but it sure does look like it. So, we go into this delicatessen, this Jewish delicatessen, and he orders a chopped liver sandwich on rye. You must always have chopped liver on rye. Any, any uh, Jewish deli sandwich, you must have on some form of rye bread. Otherwise, you could be arrested. So we go in there, and he says, Ron, you got to try the chopped liver. It is incredible. Well, um, I'm not one for consuming organ meats. Although I suppose if you're going to chop up a liver, it's more palatable than just putting a liver on a plate, saying, here's a living thing's liver. Go to town, enjoy. I mean, I could not do that. I'm sorry, I could not do that. My mother, interesting side story that you're probably not interested in. My mother couldn't cook at all. She was a horrible, horrible, horrible cook. Everything that she cooked was baked in the oven, no matter what. Hamburgers were baked in the oven. Um, liver, ugh. She served liver like every three nights she would give us a slab of liver. I don't know if she had a connection with the local hospital, like when people passed away, she would just, she'd get their livers and cook them. I really don't know. I don't know if it's cow's liver or a, 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 a chicken. I have no idea what whose liver this was. But she would take the liver and put it on a plate, and we were supposed to eat it, and she thought it was very high in protein. No, you're turning me into a cannibal is what you're doing. Here's the most disgusting part of, and, and by the way, my mother seasoned nothing, salted nothing. Uh, it was it, whatever we ate; it was just that meat in the oven at 350 for an extended period of time. Uh, it's amazing that I'm alive. It is amazing. My grandfather died of a liver disease. She had the nerve three days later to serve us liver. I had never been more grossed out in my life. But she did this. <laughs> my mother was a horrible, horrible cook. My parents are divorced, and I'm convinced it's because of her cooking. I'm convinced of that. I don't think it has anything to do with sex, money, uh, disagreements, arguments. I think it had to do with the fact that she damn well could not cook. Anyway, and that's a deal breaker. That, by the way, that's got to be a deal breaker. By the way, uh, when we went traveling and we would uh, go down these small little routes, you know, in, in these little states, these little cities and towns, there'd be signs on the side of the road that said, uh, home cooking, um, uh, home cooking, stop here, uh, Betty's home cooking. And I would say to myself, uh, I, I never want anybody's home cooking ever again. I will not take anybody's food out of a home cooking place. And this is all because of my mother. Anyway, I had a great aversion to liver. No liver, thank you. No liver, 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 liver. No, 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 no. I used to stuff the liver in my napkin and flush the napkin down the toilet, which worked for years until the toilet backed up and my mother nearly slapped the liver out of me. Anyway... 
and I was a very skinny child. Guess why? Because I wouldn't eat her damn food. You know who consumed all of her food? My napkin. My napkin was fat. <laughs> I was very skinny. Seriously, that's a true story. Anyway, so we go into this deli. Well, Ron, well, you went so far off the mark, it's not funny. Uh, so we go into this deli. He orders the chopped liver sandwich. And he says, Ron, you got to try it. Well, me being uh, very persuasive, uh, or uh, I'm not persuasive, actually. I can be persuasive, but I can also be persuaded. He, he said it was the best in the world. And, and I hadn't had a, a slab of liver or a piece of liver, any, any reasonable facsimile, since my childhood. So I said, okay, you know, I'm going to get the chopped liver as well. Figuring that um, chopped liver has got to be better than a slab of liver I will never do again in my life. A chopped liver, all right, different consistency, all that kind of stuff. So I order the chopped liver the same way he does, figuring he knows what he's talking about. I will duplicate his sandwich. It comes with a bag of chips, uh, uh, which I suppose is a very Jewish food. I, I did not know that, but apparently in a deli, you get a bag of chips. <laughs> I said, no chips for me, thank you. I'm not into the chip thing. I mean... I'm not going into a restaurant and getting a bag of chips. I mean, this is so, so stupid. So I said, what else do you have, uh, person behind the counter, Jewish man behind the counter? What else do you have besides the potato chips? Well, I can give you a small little side of potato salad. And, and my friend says, Ron, get the potato salad. It's, it's to die for. I never understood that expression. I, I, there's no food that I would decide that that is worth death. I would never... I would never say, hmm, I really should not eat this. I could die from it. Let's go for it. Uh, and then there's an actual, there's a chocolate ice cream called Death by Chocolate. Same deal. I mean, I guess if you're going to die, to go by the way of chocolate, I guess is okay. But I don't think I'm prepared to die right now based on eating some ice cream. So, no. Anyway. Uh, so I try the potato set. We sit down at a table. It's not a nice table. It's, it's a dirty formica table and we sit there and he loves it. He thinks he's, he thinks he's died and gone to heaven, which you can with some of this food apparently. So he says, Ron, try the potato salad. He watches me eat the potato salad like he's getting an orgasm watching me eat this stuff because he's so highly recommended it. There's something wrong with these people. There really is. I'm not saying there's something wrong with the Jewish people. There's something wrong with all of the people, all of human mankind. There's something wrong with all of it. I don't know what it is, but there's something off about humanity. <laughs> something that's not right. <laughs> anyway, so I'm eating the potato salad with a plastic fork, by the way, because, I mean, man, you know, you got to get the true authentic cheapness of the whole thing. And I take a bite of the potato salad, and I got to tell you something. It was legitimately awful. It was awful. I don't know what kind of mayonnaise they were using. It kind of tasted a little bit more like Elmer's glue paste, that white Elmer's glue. Similar taste. And I know what it's like because in nursery school, I think I ate some white Elmer's glue. And I don't think I'll ever forget what that tasted like. It tasted like this potato salad. Now I'm saying to myself, uh-oh, he was off the mark on the potato salad by a mile. What's going to happen with this uh, pile of crap that's between these two slices of rye bread here? He takes a bite of his chopped liver sandwich and he goes, mm, wow, this is fantastic. Okay, I take a bite of my chopped liver sandwich, I swallow it, and it is not good. It is not good. It didn't have much flavor. It had the same white Elmer's glue mayonnaise mixed into it, it was not good. It, it, it had an odor to it like they didn't preserve the liver very well after they removed it from what animal it came from. I don't know. Uh, uh, I felt like going back up to the deli counter and saying, excuse me, whose liver was this exactly? But I didn't. I ate half of the sandwich. My friend says to me, Ron, uh, you don't want to eat the other half of your sandwich? And I said, I, I had a large breakfast. Really? What'd you have for breakfast? Uh, eggs and chopped liver. So I'm kind of full with the chopped liver thing. Why'd you order it? 
because you said it was so good. I had to try it. Now, my friend didn't let on, uh, I didn't let on to my friend that I hated that sandwich. I will never go back to that delicatessen ever again. It's kind of turned me off of delicatessens. I never really liked delicatessens to begin with. I'm very aware that most um, deli meats, coal cuts, I think they call them, uh, are loaded with nitrates. And nobody ever said, Ron, eat as much nitrate stuff as you can. It's healthy. It's the opposite. No, you, you, even a, even a, a, a fetus uh, that's like two minutes old knows that you don't want to eat a lot of nitrates. There's nothing good about them. But all deli meats have them. I've said on the show before uh, that I, I just, I love uh, bologna. I, I grew up on bologna. I, I think I was raised by a, by a bologna. <sighs> and uh, every day I would crave a bologna and cheese on white bread. We had a bread called Wonder Bread. Again, some of you may not know it. It came back for a while. I don't know if it's still around anymore. The little uh, colored balloons on the package. It was a spongy white bread um, that was to die for. And I had that with uh, a bologna and, and a slice of American cheese and sometimes a little bit of lettuce, but that's green, not necessary. I lived on that for years. I loved it. There was something about it that just, oh man, it just melted my heart. I think literally it melted my heart. Um, then as I grew up, uh, I started reading about the very bologna that I am partially made out of. And I found that it's tons of nitrates and sodium. And that's when I started walking around wondering how I'm still alive. And I still don't know the answer to that. <laughs> I have no idea what I started talking about when the show began. And I could go back and listen to it, but I don't really care to, to be honest with you, any more than you do. But... Um, I just, I, I'm scared of deli meats. I, Halloween is a perfect deli meat holiday for me because I am scared of deli meats. Um, if, if there was a, um, a horrible, scary film and it starred a piece of bologna, I would probably uh, find that to be extremely scary and be up all night crying. As a matter of fact, uh, I think that next Halloween I am going to get some sliced deli meat. Not even from the deli. I'm going to get that that real nitrate stuff, the, the, that like Oscar Mayer packaged bologna. Yeah, that stuff is like you open up the, the package there and it's, it's even slimy inside. It's fantastic. I'm going to hand that out to the kids. I know you're only supposed to give them wrapped candy, but I don't think there's any law against giving kids wrapped bologna. I don't think you have to wrap the bologna. I'm just going to give them, I'm just going to open the package and just give them a slice each kid. Um, it's a little more costly, but the expression on their faces when you hand them a slice of bologna, it's just so precious. It is so much worth it. And um, I may be extra, really extra uh, nice this Halloween and actually also give them a slice of American cheese to go with the slice of bologna. Uh, yeah, yeah. No candy. Candy's not good for you. Neither is bologna. But what's the difference, you know? If you're going to uh, ruin these... Uh, see, it doesn't matter. When these little kids... See, 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 see it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. When these little kids are, are going house to house on Halloween, they're like between... They're like five to eight years old for the most part, you know? And it doesn't matter. They're so young. They can eat anything and it doesn't... They're not going to get fat necessarily unless they've got some gene problem from their parents. They're, they're going to eat every piece of candy that they're given within a two, three day period, they're going to get sick anyway. Um, little kids don't really, they bounce back. They heal very quickly. You can even push them down. You shouldn't, it's against the law, but if you push them down, they would bounce right back up again. They might get a little scrape. Two days later, the scrape's gone. Their skin is healed. What's that about? Is that magic? Is that voodoo or something? That's like magic healing. 
No, it's because they're little kids and their little cells are just like working overtime. Um, so it doesn't really matter what you give them. You can give them like a, a whole glass jar of, of congealed lard. Um, they won't die from it, really. Even if they go to the hospital, they'll be out in a few days. You do that to like a 40 or 50 year old or a 60 or 70 year old, and you've pretty much committed murder. It's so different. Older people don't heal. You can push them down. They won't get up. Not till the ambulance arrives. No, it's very different. So it doesn't really matter what you give the kids. I mean, you, you know, you don't want to give them anything harmful that could really, you know, hurt them. But uh, a slice of bologna? <sighs> Who's going to get hurt by that? You don't want to slap them with a slice of bologna as much of a, as a great sound it would make against their cheek. Um, you're not allowed to touch the kids. I learned that. There's little signs on the kids' foreheads saying, don't touch these people. These little people with tiny heads and tiny arms and tiny bodies, don't, don't touch them. And now you can't touch the adult ones either. It's kind of making life really boring. But nonetheless, um, it is a good opportunity to get rid of all that extra baloney. Uh, if you go to the deli, the bologna is the cheapest deli meat there is. You can get bologna like for $2 a pound or something if it's really bad bologna. And that's very economical for Halloween. Actually, it's a lot cheaper than candy. So I'm not suggesting that you buy like five pounds of bologna and give it out on Halloween. But it is the cheaper route. And it really will raise the eyebrows. So um, it's totally up to you. I mean, you know. Far be it from me to tell you how to live your life, but you do what you want. Ron Van Dam likes to treat every listener as someone with whom he is having an intimate, personal relationship. Although no money changes hands, there are fewer sticky bodily fluids, about half as many apologies, and he probably won't have to get rid of your body in the long run. Other than that, it's a pretty standard relationship for Ron. You're listening to The Ron Van Dam Show. I had a conversation with a young lady about dairy. Um, this is the kind of thing, when I, when I meet beautiful young women and we get into conversation, we end up talking about dairy. I don't know how that happens. But no, I don't know, but it did, and we were talking about dairy. We were talking about food and stuff, and uh, she, I don't, she was a vegetarian, a vegan, a Episcopalian. I have no idea what the fuck she was, but she didn't eat dairy. And I said uh, to her, uh, in a very innocent manner, why not? Because you're not killing the cow. You're just uh, squeezing the milk out of it, which I think you need to do. I think cows need to be milked. I don't think they mind it. I mean, nobody ever complained about having their tits pulled on. I mean, you know, some people actually think that's erotic. So I really don't know the deal with that, but uh, you're not harming the cow as far as I know uh, by extracting milk from it, nor are you harming a chicken by eating its eggs, uh, of which it apparently does a lot of laying. I know the conditions for the cow and for the chicken must be honored by the Geneva Convention, which I agree with. No living thing should be mistreated. I totally agree with that. I'm not even happy about animals being killed for meat, although I do eat meat, and I'm not happy about that, and, I'm, and I, that's one of the sticking points in, in, my, in my existence. But milk? Eggs? Seriously? Who are we hurting here? So I said to her that. I said, like, why don't you eat dairy? And she said, um, because I'm a, I'm a vegan, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an exorcist or something. And she never really answered the question. I, I don't. No, why? She says, I'm very concerned about what I put in my body. And I said, well, then we ain't having sex, obviously. Because you ain't putting me in there, obviously. That's the, we're not getting along here. We've got a great division on dairy, uh, uh, on how we raise our dairy. <laughs> so, 
Uh, but I don't quite understand that. I, I, I don't think dairy is great for the body necessarily. Too much dairy is probably not good. Too much anything is probably not good. So I was saying to myself, well, how can I figure out this dairy thing? Um, the best thing to do is to find a, a world-renowned chef and cook who can tell me about the wonders of dairy. Well, I found one, and her name is Sissy Carmichael. She's been on the show before. She's also hosts her own Food Network program. She is a world-renowned chef, and she I got her to actually talk to me, which is fantastic. Now, we've talked many times before. She's a regular guest on the program, and we go to her when we've got these kinds of questions, and then I usually end up asking for recipes. So we're going to actually speak to C.C. Carmichael. We're going to take a short commercial break, and when we come back, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, did you ever hear of a restaurant called Headshots? It's, a, uh, it's owned by a former boxer. They've got some specials, uh, and we want to tell you about them. It's some pretty interesting food. Hey, this is Bobby Marone, former heavyweight contender. But I hung up my boxing gloves to open the area's favorite new restaurant. Um, yeah, it's Headshots, Bobby. Headshots. Hey, this month we're starting something new at Headshots. It's our all-you-can-eat, nothing-but-meatball brunch. That's right. You can come to Headshots and load up on all your favorite sausage. Meatball. Right. Meatballs. It doesn't matter what kind of chicken you like. Meatball. What kind of meatball you like. We got it at the all you can eat. Nothing but typewriters. Meatballs. Meatballs. Nothing but meatball buffet. You heard me right. No pasta. No cacciatore. No lasagna. Just delicious lasagna. Yeah, meatballs. Meatballs. However you like them. Traditional. Hot and spicy, stuffed with cheese, covered in marinara. My mouth is watering just thinking about eating all these cheerleaders. Holy sh... Uh, meatballs, meatballs. Eating all these meatballs myself. So what are you waiting for? Get on down to Headshots and see if you can eat more General Gauss chicken than me, Bobby Marone. That last one was supposed to be meatballs, too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ron. Hey, Stacey. How are you? How are you? I'm good to talk to you again. You as well. I know. Well, <laughs> I know. It's always good to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's a classically trained chef, lifestyle expert, TV personality. Food Network. I remember her from commercials, to be honest with you. I don't know if people talk about it. Yeah, oh, I do. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're talking about uh, dairy products and uh, how yeah. they've, they've changed over the years. Let me start by saying that I'm a little confused about dairy because there's some talk about, well, you shouldn't eat so much dairy or not dairy at all. And then other people say, yeah, dairy is really good for you. You know, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of moderation, and the thing is, in the dairy aisle, this is, it, it has evolved so much to align with consumers changing lifestyles mm -hmm. and eating habits. So it's not just like in the old days when you'd go get milk, eggs, and butter. It's, it's gone so far beyond that, and the versatility of everything. There's just so many product options that lend themselves to, you know, small meals, portable snacks, yeah. and, you know, really great, easy, fun, entertaining ideas. Yeah. And the selection, I mean, it's like yogurts, um, pro any kind of proteins, fun, trendy beverages, organic milk, cheeses, and dairy alternatives, I think, is, is a, a category that's really exploding. It's really exciting, to, so exciting to see. Yeah, yogurts are very interesting because they're supposed to be incredibly healthy. Uh, I'm, I'm confused between Greek yogurt and other kinds of yogurt and stuff, but they come in drinks. They come in squeezable, uh, uh, softer things and uh, different. Yeah, it's just it's, like, wow, a whole, it's a whole new category of food, I think. I think that I think it, it has... Uh, 
j- just the, 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 the way that, that things are packaged now, it's a lot, a lot of yeah. grab-and-go stuff, which I think is really sort of fits into people's lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know, you know, like I was saying before, the, the, the growing uh, 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 non-dairy alternatives, almond and soy milk, yeah. non-dairy yogurt, so you don't need to necessarily avoid the dairy aisle anymore for mm-hmm. dietary reasons. And the, the yogurts, I mean, every time I turn around, there's a brand new t- type of yogurt. It's, I, I, I spend at least 20 minutes in the yoga, like Greek, <laughs> non-fat, full-fat, exotic flavors. There really is something for everyone. And like I said, like, you know, on set here, I've got a, you know, a big ice bucket filled with these wonderful on-the-go snack options, um, you know, with the yogurts, uh, hard-boiled eggs, eggs that come already boiled. It's such, such yeah. time savers. Yogurts, uh, cheeses. It's just it's just dizzying the the array of what you can you can serve. Yeah, it, it is kind of amazing. But as you say, everything in moderation. But uh, somehow the healthier things are starting to come through the yogurt aisles. Yeah, I mean, I think that you're finding so many sort of he- he- healthy alternatives, yeah. low fat. You know, there, it, when I say there's something for everyone. Um, you know, again, yeah. you know, you don't you don't have to skip it anymore, thinking oh. that it's you know you're not going to find something fabulous oh, and healthy in yeah. there. To me, yogurt <laughs> yogurt's like ice cream to me, to be honest with you, because it's it, it tastes is, the it's same. It's gotten that way. Yeah, some of these flavors, it's like <laughs> you know, salted caramel. It's like sometimes I just get yogurt instead of you know low fat yogurt, and I can't <laughs> even. The Greek yogurts are so creamy that it's like eating full-fat yogurt, and yeah. it's non-fat or low-fat, and all these, like, like key lime pie flakes. Yes, it really it's, gets that, those, it's like dessert. It's, it's like oh, amazing. it's heavenly. It's I, just heavenly. Know, throw a couple of graham crackers in there, and you can't tell Ooh. the difference between that and that. Uh-oh. Oh, my uh-oh. God. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why didn't I think of that, Ron? Uh-oh. Because we, so we collaborate. We <laughs> collaborate. Uh, I'm going to try that. That makes so much yeah. sense. Speaking of dishes, uh, can you? I always ask you to just throw me a few uh, little uh, quick recipe ideas. For yeah, I've here. got I got so much on set. I wish you I wish you you could see, yeah, but I I'll, I'll try to describe them okay. for you. Um, but I, I have three sort of categories of sort of entertaining ideas, and one of the first one is beverages, and um, I think you know I always like to sort of have a, a signature beverage, a big pitcher, like right on set. I've got this gorgeous sangria made with orange juice. It's a white sangria. Um, I've got a, 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 a cocktail that I call the Grapefruit Sparkle with ruby red grapefruit juice. You can serve that with or without alcohol. I sometimes put a little splash of Prosecco yeah. or, or champagne in sure. there. Yeah. Sure. And then the S'mores Milkshake made with organic chocolate milk, Ooh. and it's got little marshmallows on top. Second category, you can't have a party without cheese as far as I'm concerned. Everybody loves it. Um, I've got some uh, fruit and cheese skewers. And I serve it with like a little uh, side dish of honey and um, yogurt for to dip it in, wow. and mozzarella crostini with uh, tomatoes and basil, and this cheese ball, which to me is like such a 19, it's such a classic. Uh, you know, it's just basically cream cheese, shredded cheese, rolled in pecans, and that just is like the easiest thing, and people just go straight for it. I can spend hours on something else. I can spend five uh. minutes on my cheese ball, and it's gone. Yeah. And then the um, the salad category, which has you know, a Waldorf salad, which to me, again, is one of these sort of madmen type of salads. It's so, it's so like, 1960s. I love it. Mm-hmm. Um, with apple, celery, pecans, and a sour cream dressing. Um, hard-boiled eggs, uh, deviled eggs. I, with cheese and bacon, forget about it. I just, I'm, I don't know what it is about deviled eggs. I'm just obsessed with them. Yeah. Uh, and a, then yeah. a, a really not light and colorful uh, broccoli salad with Greek yogurt. Oh, my God. Um, you get a lot of options. There's so much inspiration now in the in the dairy aisle that you just sort of, I sort of just go there and it just sort of is a, is my launching point wow. for what I want to make for my parties. It's I, th- really I think great. all these. Yeah. Oh, a- a- after talking to you, uh, having a party and just offering potato chips would probably be embarrassing. You, you can't do that. No, I won't, no, I won't permit it. I know. It's, Especially it's when illegal. it's so easy. Yeah. Especially like, you know, you can make deviled eggs. You don't even have to boil the eggs. You don't even have to cook. Yeah, they're just there. You know, they're already already done for you. Nice stuff. (laughs) Um, I understand that there is a a chance to win uh, uh, some money here. Yes. Well, I don't know if you were aware that it's June is uh, is, uh, dairy month. Mm -hmm. And in in honor of that, the National Frozen and Refrigerated Foods Association is holding a uh, $10,000 sweepstakes. You can... um, Enter to win $5,000, uh, go to easyhomemeals.com. And by the way, easyhomemeals.com has all the recipes, all this 
stuff that I, and pictures of things that I was talking today, so your so your listeners can can uh, go take a look at what's uh, what I was talking about today and uh, enter the contest while they're there. Great. And where do I go to do this? What is the website that I may visit? Easy, easyhomemeals.com. Okay, easyhomemeals.com. And if we wanted to follow uh, yourself, how would we do that? Um, I'm, I, I, my, I, I was blogging, but I'm not really blogging oh. anymore. So just go to Easy Home Meals, and, and uh, that, that's your one-stop shop. Thanks so okay, much. Okay, okay. Great talking to you always. Uh, after you I talk well. to you, I always have to go and find something to eat very quickly. I know. Yeah. I, I didn't eat. I didn't eat enough breakfast this morning. I'm thinking, like, I'm looking at that cheese ball, and I'm like, mmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got that all in front breakfast. of you. Yeah, you got it all laid out in front of you. That's the great thing about doing this because you got the food there. <laughs> Me, I'm just staring at a cup of coffee. That's all I'm looking at. <laughs> all sad. All right. Go get yourself something to eat and have a great summer and head to the dairy aisle and get some inspiration. Thank you very much. Good talking to you again. You as well, Ron. Take care. Bye bye, Cece. Bye. She's adorable, isn't she? Isn't she adorable, ladies and gentlemen? And she cooks. Seriously? It's fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time for today. Please join me again tomorrow at any time you want during the day. I'll be here. <laughs> I don't know if you found me there on the Podbean Network or on iTunes or TuneIn Radio or the Alexa Amazon app or SoundCloud or all the shows on YouTube. I don't know where you find me. Just continue to do so. Let's keep this up, shall we? Bye. I wish you peace. I do. I really do. I know. I know. I know.